It's a wet spring day and I'm heading to Hampshire, southeast England, to visit one of the UK's top sparkling wine producers, Hattonley Valley Wines. Since its founding in 2008 and the estate's first harvest in 2010, Hattonley Valley has consistently received top awards for its sparkling wines. Upon arrival, the winery was buzzing with activity, workers busily putting on foil caps and preparing bottles of wine for shipment. Elsewhere, bottles are mechanically riddled in steel box cages in order to consolidate sediment to the neck of the bottle for removal later. I was curious to find out more about Hattonley Valley. As luck would have it, owner and founder Simon Robinson was on hand to talk about how Hattonley Valley came to be. Uh, we established it in 2008, uh, our first vintage in 2010. We had a commercial farm. Uh, and we were looking for farm diversification. Yeah, I was also interested in wine. It had been for many, many years. And English sparkling wine was beginning to get a, a reputation for good quality products. So the key to, uh, to this for me was finding the right people to help us. And we were incredibly lucky finding our head winemaker, Emma Rice. But she's helped us all the way along. It's been an incredibly effective partnership. Head winemaker Emma Rice has taken Hattonley Valley Sparkling Wine program to unbelievable heights in just six short years, winning numerous awards, including being awarded a Cantor Magazine's number one English sparkling wine for its 2011 King's Cuvée. So how did one of England's top winemakers get her start, and what is her winemaking philosophy at Hattonley Valley? I started my career in wine business in the trade in London, working for a Burgundy merchant. Ended up moving to Mitchell Beasley and was an editor of Hugh Johnson's Pocket Wine Book. At that point I found out about a winemaking course down at Plumpton College. I had always had a love for wine throughout my, complete, you know, my whole working life and I just really wanted to get my hands dirty and find out how to make it. Um, and um, I left London, went to college, retrained as a winemaker at the age of 30, and um, the rest is history. After winemaking gigs in California, Tasmania, and Australia, Emma and her husband came back to the UK to regroup, only to find an exciting and rapidly growing English wine industry, ultimately leading to her current position at Hattonley Valley as head winemaker. So what makes the sparkling wines at Hattonley Valley so unique? One of our key signature sort of winemaking techniques is the use of oak barrels, and they're all old oak. We're not unique by any stretch in terms of using barrels, but I think we probably use a higher proportion than most wineries in the UK. It helps us to soften the, the acidity that we get from the grapes. Talking about how high the acidity is in, in English grapes um, and English juice and wine, um, having a, a lot of lees contact um, and relatively oxidative fermentation um, does help to soften the acidity. So what about grape growing in England? To find out more about the English terroir and Hattonley Valley's vineyards, I caught up with vineyard manager Jim Bowerman. I love working in English viticulture. It's a very interesting place to be at the moment. It's a very challenging place to be. It feels like we're on the extremities of, uh, you know, probably one of the most northern regions there is, uh, growing quality, high quality wine. It's definitely a place to be if, if you want challenging great growing conditions. Um, you learn a lot here. I think I learn more here growing grapes than I, I have done elsewhere in, in Europe or, or in the States even. Uh, it makes every, every season almost unique and, uh, and, and we're discovering the real limits of what we can do with our viticulture. We have about 22 hectares of uh, vineyards, uh, mainly planted with Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Pinot Meunier. Uh, we have various different clones within those varieties and we plant across six, six different sites uh, across Hampshire. So probably our premium sites are down in the Test Valley, uh, which are about 40 metres above sea level, and that perfect chalk underneath with about 20, 30 centimetres of topsoil, uh, flint, loamy clay over the top. The highest vineyard is 183 metres up, which is hugely high for the UK. Our earliest variety would be the Pinot Precoce, which is a, a special clone or type of Pinot Noir. And that would come in traditionally towards the end of September. And then generally the Pinots and Chardonnays, uh, they come online in October. But what are the biggest challenges to grape growing in the UK? I think uh, in the UK, the biggest challenge really is probably the climate. We have colder uh, conditions, colder temperatures, uh, higher rainfall, uh, generally speaking. 
uh, and it presents all sorts of issues with uh, disease control, for example, with the soil moisture being high, um, especially if we get summer rain. You know, we have to have a very robust program to defend against disease uh, and infection in the vineyards. And what about grape ripeness? Uh, in, in difficult years, when the sunshine levels are low, when the heat is low, um, it can be difficult to get it through. The culture is about maximizing the exposure of the leaf to the sunshine at every opportunity and the bunches. So we get that ripeness by uh, October. We'll clock in between 17 and 18 bricks, something like that, up to 19 in good seasons. Um, but generally we're watching the acids, the pH, the TAs, uh, and making sure they're nicely balanced uh, for the sparkling wine. Despite Hattonley Valley's success, producing world-class sparkling wine in the UK hasn't been all wine and roses, as head winemaker Emma Rice can attest. 2012 vintage was the biggest challenge that I have ever seen in my entire life, winemaking or otherwise. We had no harvest uh, to speak of. The grapes we did get in were not usable. The tiny proportion that we did harvest went to uh, reserve wine and have been blended away uh, since then. It was soul destroying for the vineyard team and then for the winery team as well. But how does the English terroir compare to Champagne, the most famous sparkling wine region in the world? To answer this is Hatley Valley's Champenoise vineyard consultant, Romain Henrion. Uh, UK is more maritime. Um, weather change very, very often and very quick. So it's uh, sometimes difficult to, uh, to work with this weather. It's more about temperature and um, the light as well. Because when it's cloudy, there is no photosynthesis. And if it's not photosynthesis in vineyards, there is no production of carbon matter. So in Champagne, um, we have a challenge with the uh, global warming. In Champagne, the acidity decreased uh, since last few decades. It's too warm, so the manic acid is burned uh, very fast now especially in Champagne, Burgundy, well, all of the region. We need more cool climate. But is this warming effect impacting the UK's wine production? And is it the reason for the sudden success of English sparkling wine on the international scene? Because we've only been growing the traditional sparkling grapes in England since the 90s, and very few vineyards were doing it then. So whether or not the climate generally is warming up to enable us to, to do it more reliably, or whether it was always good enough to do it, is we don't have enough data to, to answer that question. But we are definitely able to produce juice from Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Manier of a similar ripeness level to champ the Champagne of 20, 30 years ago. There's no doubt that the UK has found its groove with its sparkling wine production, but I wondered if consumers would be treated to other styles of English wine in the near future. In my opinion, it, sparkling wine will be the dominant, or it is already the dominant um, style. You need underripe grapes to make sparkling wine, and England is good at making, growing underripe grapes. Um, they're underripe in terms of sugar and acidity by comparison to the, to the rest of the wine making world, but they are not underripe in terms of flavour. We have such a long growing season. So we're in Budburst now, middle of April. Champagne Budburst 10 days ago across, you know, across various sites. So in terms of our, where we start our growing season, we're very similar. But we can be three, four, five weeks later in, at the end of the year. There's no doubt the grapes have really lovely developed flavour but they are not high in sugar and they are, they are very high in acid. That's key to what we're doing here. It was now time for a quick tank sample of the base rosé wine used to make Hattonley Valley's award-winning sparkling rosé. The base wine had been fermented almost bone dry, yet surprisingly had layers of amazing red fruit and floral flavors. This is our 2015 uh, rosé, just oh. been uh, cold stabilized and filtered. It's ready to go into the bottle. Very, very delicate, elegant color. It's our signature style for the rosé. It's, it's this very light, delicate, elegant pink, soft pink. With a wonderful nose of Pinot carrot fruit, strawberries and raspberries. And now the best for last. We're off to taste some of Hantley Valley's world-class sparkling wines. So we're gonna try our classic cuvee 2013 which is um, it's a, it's the last vintage, as I was saying, mm -hmm. the classic cuvee, and then it's going to become a, a non-vintage from, from this later this year onwards. So this is about 50% Chardonnay, about 30% Pinot Noir, and 20% Pinot Meunier, with a tiny little bit of Pinot Gris, which is... It's a very fresh, 
Queen knows. And then we have our rosé, which is also from the 2013 vintage. We intend the rosé to continue being a vintage wine. Um, mm -hmm because it very much depends on the quality of the Pinot Noir that comes in. Right. So it's mm -hmm. all Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, mm -hmm. and a secret weapon in this one is the Pinot Noir Picos, oh. which is an early ripening clone of Pinot Noir. We use that to blend with the base wines from the Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Well, it's time to let the crew at Hattonley Valley get back to their work. The wines definitely lived up to all their accolades. Special thanks to all the folks at Hattonley Valley. Don't forget to give English sparkling wine a try. Bye-bye.